Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. This is way back. Walk the ball. Chris Taylor. What's up, everybody? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Matt Moreno, and this is the home of your 2022 National League West champion, Los Angeles Dodgers, Matt. Uh, we knew this was a day that was coming. Obviously, the Dodgers go on to win. They celebrate the NL West. And let me ask you this question. What did you make of the celebrations? There's been some talk on social media about foregone conclusion, 20-game division lead. Why are we celebrating this? They haven't won anything yet. Where do you stand on the Dodgers celebrating last night? Yeah, I mean, I will say I'm very much, uh, and I'm sure our viewers have picked up on this, like, you know, World Series or bust. I subscribe to that theory and mindset. But I think baseball's unique in the sense of, you know, other sports like the NBA. And what the Dodgers get compared to a lot is the Lakers' reaction after they won the Western Conference Finals coming back from losing to the, the Celtics in the NBA Finals the year before. You know, they didn't touch the trophy. They didn't really care. You know, Kobe famously said, job's not finished in the NBA Finals. Baseball's different, right? Like, you play 162 games. Yes. It's, it's a grind. And so I'm fine, especially with this team, celebrating – the NL West Championship. I was glad that they didn't do the celebration we saw for the postseason berth because I think that wasn't worth it. You know, do the toast inside privately, and that's fine. But this team should celebrate the NL West. It's it's a milestone, and they have proven, and they have the players who are capable of taking in that moment, but still, and everybody last night was saying it, you know, we understand there's still one goal, and we're not done. This is just the first step to getting there. Yeah, I think it was Freddie Freeman that said it's the first time he's ever had the champagne shower after a normal handshake line. Like, So I, I do think the Dodgers actually found the right balance of there doesn't need to be a dog pile. There doesn't need to be a mosh pit on the field. You easily beat the Diamondbacks. You have a 20-game div divisional lead. But yes, you've been working for months and months and months and playing every single day to get to this point. You are the best team in baseball. You should allow yourself a moment to celebrate that, not to mention they didn't win the division last year. And so they had to deal with all of the crap of not winning the division last year to come back to dominate the way they did. I'm all for it. I was talking to Greg Bergman on our live stream last night, and I said, I am over-celebrate guy rather than under-celebrate. I think we live in a world where you should celebrate more things, not less things. And so for the Dodgers to go out and do this, it felt totally appropriate. They had the right attitude. Every interview was like, look, this isn't the end goal. This is one celebration. We hope we have two or three more representing winning, you know, the NLDS, the NLCS, and then the World Series. But I thought that was appropriate. When they were in the locker room, Sportsnet LA, did you have a favorite moment or a favorite sort of scene going on amongst the, uh, amongst the stuff? Because in a moment, we're going to get to the sheriffs guarding the pool for Arizona. But before we go outside of the locker room, inside the locker room, was there a favorite scene? Yeah, I think, and before I answer that really quick, just to echo your point, you know, another thing too is you had some first timers, Andrew yep. Heaney, Tyler Anderson, Yancy Almonte, like they've never been able to experience something like this. And so if the Dodgers just would have been like, oh, you know, another win for us, no big deal. Like what if those guys never get back to this yeah. position again, they would have been robbed of that opportunity. So I think that's important as well. Uh, to answer your question, I think uh, it's a popular choice. I'll probably go with Kershaw, you know, shirt off in the clubhouse, just literally and figuratively soaking it all in uh, and no goggles. And I know we discussed this on our watch party. He's made it a point and he said it again last night to, you know, you don't always get here. This isn't a given as much as it sort of feels that way with the Dodgers over the last 10 years. Uh, and so he enjoys kind of feeling the burn of champagne and beer in his eyes, which I don't know if I would go to that extreme, but I can respect it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think, I think him walking around just with his shirt off, really enjoying everything. Uh, I will say, you know, it was pretty, so, I mean, I'll, I know you'll, I'll let you answer first, then we'll... I'll back. say this. I did not have Kershaw as the most intoxicated guy in the Dodgers locker room, but I think based on post-game interviews and and all, all the scene, I think he was probably a safe bet to have been the most intoxicated guy, at least at that point. I imagine there was further intoxication for many of the other guys as the, uh, as the night went on, but you kind of actually touched on it. I loved Kershaw with his shirt off, didn't care, dad bod, not the best-looking guy in the world as far as his physique, and yet... Just full send. You pitch that way. You're the best pitcher of your generation. You can do whatever the heck you want. My favorite moment, though, was the guys for the first time. You could see how much it meant to Kershaw to be go to be able to go over to Tyler Anderson, to go over to Yenti Almonte, and allow those guys, Andrew Heaney, to soak it in. I mean, Heaney's the guy I kept hearing about. 
he, the Yankees made the playoffs last year. He was not on the roster. He was not allowed to enjoy that experience. So for him to be a positive contributor here, I thought that was cool. I liked seeing Michael Grove and Ryan Pepio and Miguel Vargas and Andre Jackson, those guys getting to be a part of it. You know, because for those guys, you don't know what the rest of their career looks like, where they're going to be, how long they're going to be here. But I just think seeing those faces alongside the Justin Turners who are having a great time. The guys who have been here, done that six, seven times, like Kershaw and Turner. So I just thought that dynamic was really, really cool. And I just love seeing guys get to celebrate the fruit of their labor. So that, that to me, was the best moment. Was there anything you wanted to touch on before we get to the uh, the uh, pool party that wasn't? Yeah, so I know you know you mentioned Justin Turner, and he was uh, him and David Vasse had a pretty good exchange where Vasse was starting an interview, and I think uh, Hans Alberto came over and poured a bunch of beer on Vasse and he said, oh, you know, that's serious brain freeze or something to that effect. And Turner said back, you know, if you had a brain or something yeah. along those lines. And Vasse, the guys, Vasse takes a lot of punches from them and gives them, you know, a hard time as well. And so they have a fun dynamic. And another exchange I enjoyed too was uh, an interview with Gavin Lux and Will Smith. And Va this is another one that Vasse is doing with both of them. And he asked Lux about Will Smith. And Lux simply said, you know, best catcher in baseball. Knowing Dang that right. Will Smith, yeah, knowing that Will Smith won't say anything, Vasse then sticks the microphone in his face and says, "Hey, like, you know, what do you want to say to that?" And Smith looks a little uncomfortable, kind of laughs, and Luck says, "He won't say anything, but he should," you know. And then he repeat, like, "He won't say anything, but he should." I thought that was just funny uh, to kind of see some personalities coming out. I love it. I love it. All right, let's get to uh, to the other piece of this here: the Diamondbacks having some sheriffs protecting the pool. Here was the image, I believe, from USA Today. You posted it out on uh, on your social media account. We know the story, right? When Yasiel Puig and the Dodgers clinched back in Arizona a number of years ago, they decided afterwards that they were going to go celebrate in the pool. Whether they peed in the pool, to be determined, still, still a mystery there. We know the next time the Dodgers were in Arizona with the chance to clinch, they had horses with sheriffs atop them guarding it. Tonight, we see some law enforcement out there. It looks like we got a mascot with a bat of some sort. What did you make of this scene? I mean, I guess I wasn't surprised, right? Like, the Diamondbacks, clear, they've made no secret of how they felt with the Dodgers totally. celebrating. And who can blame them, by the way? I love it as a Dodger fan. If you were a Diamondback fan, there's not a single Diamondback fan that would be like, yeah, you know what? That was kind of cool. Good for you, right? Like, it makes total sense that they responded the way they did. It's certainly fair, but I'm also of the opinion of, you know, if you don't want that to happen, then win the game type thing. Totally. Uh, I, I will say that this one does sort of land, at least I don't think it's as egregious as like you alluded to in 2017 when the Dodgers swept them in the NLDS and cops on horseback were lined along the warning track protecting the pool. I thought that was a bit aggressive. This one, I think it wasn't maybe necessarily so much for the to deter players as it was, you know, you see Dodger fans sitting right there kind of, behind the pool just to make sure they wouldn't jump in I think is a possibility and that's understandable but just the history given the history the optics of this just don't look great and the Diamondbacks frankly are taking a beating on social media for it yeah it's amazing I mean Dave Roberts before the game like he, he said I don't think we're going to be doing those things I mean he was he was firm and yet it wasn't hey there is no chance we will be swimming in the pool tonight and so I just got a good laugh out of that the the Puig in the pool thing to me is just like an all-timer as far as I'm concerned. Like, I just think it's hilarious. Again, if I'm a Diamondbacks player, executive fan, I would be furious. I would hate it. I get it. As a Dodgers fan, I thought it was amazing. I love that we keep having these moments in Arizona. And I do agree. Look, the easiest way to prevent us from swimming in your pool is by beating us. Unfortunately, uh, the Diamondbacks team has not necessarily been handed the tools necessary to go and do that. So there you have it. Dodgers win the NL West in Arizona. They celebrate accordingly. Some people say they over-celebrate. You and I are both in agreement. They handled this the way they should. Enjoy the moment. Celebrate the victory. Celebrate four, six, nine, 12 months of hard work to get to this point. And then move on. We're not worried about whether or not um, this is going to impact them. Do you think, just before we end, tonight's game, are you worried about a hangover a little bit? You think that celebration maybe gets to them? Not too much. I mean, I think, you know... A, sweeping a team is always hard, and so they've already won two of three. And so any under any scenario, winning to, uh, tonight would be not challenging, but not necessarily given. But of course, if they do lose, I think that'll be the narrative that people run with. Uh, another thing to consider, though, is rosters aren't expanded to 40, pe 40 people, any, 40 yeah. players anymore. So you're going to still have several regulars in there. Uh, Freeman did, Freddie Freeman did joke last night that he hadn't heard anything about getting his first game off, so he hadn't taken a sip of alcohol yet just to be safe. <laughs> Jeez, uh, nice. But, I mean, I'm not too worried about the proverbial, quote-unquote, hangover, but also I'm not guaranteeing a win. 
I don't know if it's a proverbial hangover, Matt. It might be a literal hangover. I, 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 Dodgers Daily today, we talked about this. If you missed it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check it out. I've got the under nine tonight. I think I think we got some low scoring. I think the Hanser Alberto, Miguel Vargas, Bellinger, Taylor, Gallo lineup uh, may not produce at the same level. Grove versus Davies, under nine. I like that one, minus 110. So, all right. Well, that's Matt Moreno. My name is Jeff Spiegel. As always, we appreciate you joining us here at Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com, part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network. As I mentioned, please subscribe, ring the notification bell here on YouTube. If you're a podcast person, check out our podcast, Dodger Heads, on Apple, uh, Spotify, Google, wherever you get it. And, of course, Dodger Blue 1958 everywhere on social media. We appreciate you guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you next time.